We've discussed how a dynamic equilibrium can be described by an equilibrium constant, the form of which we can determine just from the reaction stoichiometry regardless of whether the reaction is an elementary reaction equilibrium or the equilibrium of a complex mechanism. But we have to remember that this constant only describes the situation once equilibrium has been reached. And before equilibrium has been reached, the concentrations won't be in the target ratio yet. We can still at any point calculate what the ratio is, it's just going to be a different value, so we call it something else. The reaction quotient, Q. The convenient thing about the reaction quotient is that it tells us, under any conditions, which direction the reaction will shift in order to approach equilibrium. Let's suppose that Q is greater than the equilibrium constant. We can think of that as the numerator being too big or the denominator being too small, which is another way of saying that there is too much product or too little reactant. So the reaction will shift to the left in order to approach equilibrium. In the opposite case, the reaction will shift to the right. Let's imagine a related situation. Suppose we have the reaction already at equilibrium, and then we add some of a product, C, to the reaction mixture. What will happen to the reaction? Well, we have now taken the reaction quotient, which previously was equal to the equilibrium constant, and we've increased the numerator, making the reaction quotient larger. So the reaction will shift to the left to reestablish its equilibrium. Similarly, if we add more reactant to the equilibrium mixture, we will have made the denominator larger. So the reaction will shift to the right to reestablish its equilibrium. This idea is codified in Le Chatelier's principle which says that if a dynamic equilibrium is disturbed, the system will shift to diminish the change. Looking at the top case, the disturbance was an addition of the substance C, and the response of the system was to shift the reaction away from C, using some of it up. In the bottom case, the disturbance was an addition of substance B, and the response of the system was to shift the reaction away from B, using some of it up. This idea behind Le Chatelier's principle applies to even more than just the concentrations of the reactants and the products. For example, let us suppose that the reaction we are looking at is exothermic. An exothermic reaction releases heat, which we can informally represent by adding heat to the product side. This now tells us what will happen to the equilibrium if we disturb the system by increasing the temperature. We can think of that as adding heat to the system which is on the product side, so the equilibrium will shift towards the reactants. An endothermic reaction can be thought of as having heat on the reactant side, and so increasing the temperature will shift the equilibrium towards products. Similarly, imagine a gas phase reaction like this one, where we have two moles of gas on the left and three moles of gas on the right. If we compress the gases, increasing each of their partial pressures, then the equilibrium will shift in the direction of relieving some of that pressure toward the side with fewer moles of gas. All in all, Le Chatelier's principle is a remarkably straightforward and extremely powerful guideline for how reactions will adjust based on nearly any kind of perturbation you can think of.